Hey folks, how are we all doing? Um, I'm in a, a bit of a different angle, but you'll know why, because I'm painting rather than uh, slinging cards today. Um, I've decided today to go with the, you know, the, the headset um, because I've noticed that when I use the, when I'm painting and when I use the, the microphone, microphone, because I'm like moving about all the time, like I feel some out of deals in and out. Um, and it's quite annoying. So at least this way, the microphone will always be beside my mouth, and I won't need to like move it and adjust it and stuff like that. So that's a bit better. Um, I, I've I'd kind of I put on like the Facebook group in the description and stuff like that. Um, today is Rachel's Rachel Pollock's birthday. Um, that's why I'm doing something a wee bit different. Um, I'm actually going to use one of the cards from her deck as inspiration for what we're going to create. So this might turn out to be not very good. That's fine. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just go with it and see what happens. Um, I've just realised I'm just looking at myself and I can't actually see the comments. Hoping you can all hear me and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, before we get going, let me just say hi to the people that are here then. Um, so I've got Red Wing. Hi, Red Wing. I've got Robin. Uh, brushes at the ready. They are Robin. I'll show you. Like the, I'm kind of going to be winging it today because this isn't like a tutorial that I'm following where they've already told me that like, you need these three brushes or whatever. Um, I'm just going to be kind of a do, doing this myself. So we'll see how we get on. But I'll show you everything that I've got in front of me. Um, Deanne from Blue Crescent Tarot. Hi, Deanne. Um, Simon from the Hermit's Cave. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Debbie from Aquarius Owl. Uh, Jen from Inspiration Psychology with Jen. It's lovely to see you, Jen. Uh, let's see who else we've got. I'm going to have to lean down to just scroll down this chart. Sorry, folks. Uh, Jen, Debbie, Simon. Robin, Nancy from Macron's Intuition. Hi, Nancy. Cheyenne's here. Hi, Cheyenne. Kristen's here. How you doing, Kristen? Uh, Kathy from Tortoise Shell Moon. And I think that's everyone. Um, so welcome and, you know, the people that aren't chatting that are just kind of watching, welcome to you guys as well. Um. Right, let me kind of show you what I've got in front of me here. It's a bit of a mess, actually. <laughs> um, so this is a box that's basically filled with all different paintbrushes. If I kind of show you the bottom there, you can kind of see there's even like some pencils. There's a rubber, some string. And there's all sorts in here. Um, what we're going to be painting, what we're going to be kind of using as our inspiration. So if I just change this over now is Rachel's High Priestess card from the, oops, this is really what I want to do. Um, anyway, you can see it on the screen. Um, it's the High Priestess card from Rachel's Shining Tribe deck. I suppose um, before I get into that, I should just talk a wee bit about it. So um, we all know and love Rachel Pollock. Um, she wrote, you know, some of my favourite books on tarot. What have we got here? Let's come back to me. Um, so we've got, this is the, the guidebook for the Shining Tribe. This is Rachel's tarot deck. Um, so this is, you know, what, we're, um, what we've taken the, our inspiration from. Uh, this is a book called Tarot with the Open Labyrinth. Now, this isn't one that I hear people talking about very often. Um, I found it on either eBay or um, I can't quite remember, uh, but this is basically just a book of readings that she's done for people. Um, like it's kind of a reads like sample readings, but it's like live readings that she's kind of going into depth about. Really, really cool. I love reading stuff like that. Um, this is one of her novels called The Fisher King. Um, of course, we've got Seventy Eight Degrees of Wisdom and just delivered by the way even though i've had the audiobook for um for months and i've listened to it twice now um i walked through the forest of souls so this is a re-release of an older book of rachel's 
um, and another of her novels for which I think she um, won awards uh, Unquenchable Fire. Um, I know I've got audiobooks as well of Rachel's, so there's loads. Um, she's also, um, she'd also done comics. Uh, she collected fountain pens. If you search Rachel Pollock on YouTube, you'll find a wealth of different content. Um, and there's nothing better than, you know, going down a Rachel Pollock rabbit hole. So, yeah, let me um, change that screen up again and let you see. So the card that you can see there is the High Priestess card from the Shining Tribe. That's what we're going to, we're going to, we'll change things, we'll change things up. There'll be some things that we kind of uh, maybe keep similar, keep the same. There'll be some things that we, you know, we don't quite, where we change up. So we'll see how we go on, what I'm going to do here, because I had, um, everything's all out of whack on my screens because I'm not using the third screen because um, the canvas is covering that. Um, but I did have opened up uh, a big basically copy of that card just so that I could kind of have a look at it and compare and stuff as I go. Um, I don't really want to spend too much time yapping before I get started because I'm not really sure how long this is going to take me. Um, who knows, we might even need to do this across more than one uh you know, more than one live, but we'll see. Okay, right, I've got a massive version of it on the screen here. So, generally when I'm painting using acrylics, I'll start with from further away and I'll work my way forward. I'll start with the kind of a more background stuff and work my way forward. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the background. Now, you'll see on the card that it's a kind of a pale blue background. Um, you know, it's just quite a, you know, a uniform pale blue. Um, we're pretty much going to uh, do the same, but I think I'll maybe kind of a change, you know, introduce some different kind of a tones and stuff. We'll have some darker blues, we'll have some pale blues. Um, I'm maybe going to kind of a try and make it look watery because to me that's, you know, that, that makes sense for the High Priestess is to have that kind of a watery domain. Um, so what have I got here? I've got... I'm, I'm starting off with an, I'm going to do this, so this is like an inch flat brush and I'm just going to kind of use that to slap on the paint and then I've got this and this actually looks like a makeup brush and I mean I've never really used a makeup brush I'll be honest but I think it's quite similar, it's basically for blending, for blending colours together, um, I got it quite recently so we'll give it a try, we'll see how we go on. Um, right, let's see, I've, I've got a um, a kind of a big tub of ultramarine blue here. So this is a kind of a dark colour of blue. Um, but what we'll do is we'll mix ourselves a couple of different, you know, a couple of different shades to get us started. I need to make sure that I put everything in the bin as I go along and I don't like let these wee silver things just scatter about everywhere. So I've got my palette here. Um, I'm going to, let's see, we'll have a, you know, a dollop of just the dark blue on its own. I'm then, I'm then going to have some of the kind of a blue, um, so we've kind of a small, medium and large there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white paint uh, and I'm going to kind of a do something similar. So I'm going to have lots of white. Oh, that's making a lovely noise on here. And a little bit here just to kind of lighten that up. Uh, and let me get my palette mixed. I'm sorry if I'm not very chatty. That's one thing about these painting lives is I'm not really very good at keeping up with the chat it's hard to concentrate on something like this and kind of a be sociable but what i'll try and do is stop every now and then and you know check in with you guys and see what's happening 
Um, there it goes. That's made a kind of a, a lightish blue. And then we'll mix this as well. And the idea is that this will be very, very light. Um, actually, a bit darker than I wanted it to be. That's okay. Okay. What I will probably do um, is dump the brush in some water and I'll probably start with the kind of a lighter blue for the top um, and you know it can get darker as we go down and then we'll go through and maybe add in some uh, some white highlights um, and that will kind of give it a watery look or that's the theory anyway <laughs> we'll see how we get on. So I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, so we just now just so I can get that up that. And as I say, I'm just going to kind of try and like slap this on or maybe start picking up some of that darker blue. I don't want it to be too like uniform. I want to have different tones and you know, just make it look a bit interesting, you know. So obviously um, the background on the actual card itself is just light blue. Um, I'm not too worried about, you know, darkening it up because if you look at the colours on the, the other kind of features of the card, I think they'll contrast nicely against a kind of a darker blue, you know, just as well as they would against the light blue. So um, I'm not too worried about the, uh, you know, changing the colour of the background. I think it will. I think it will work well. I'm just trying to kind of keep that left to right motion just to, you know, if, if I was doing the sky, I'd maybe be doing like circular motions, you know, um, to give it that uh, kind of a sky, like maybe like the illusion of some clouds and stuff. But because this is water that we're, we're painting, um, we kind of want it, want it to have that. You know, that left to right. One thing that if you've watched me before, then you'll kind of know this. But one thing that I, I will need to do every so often is um, stop and dry the canvas. Um, so I've got a blow dryer underneath my desk that I'll use to do that, um, just so that we're not waiting on it drying. Acrylic paint does dry pretty fast. That's one of the kind of a one of the ben, I suppose one of the kind of advantages to working with acrylics. Um, Uh, but but you know we can we can obviously kind of a speed up the process using a blow dryer. Oh, maybe pick up some lighter blue. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be too uniform. Or, you know, quite often the way the the, the sun reflects and on water, it can kind of have that lighter kind of a appearance down the middle. You know, so. 
Who knows? Maybe that's maybe um that's what our body of water is going to look like. Starting to delve into that darker blue as well now. When I get to the bottom, I might even pick up a wee bit of black in addition to the blue, just to give it a nice dark blue and just kind of a, you know, just just give it something a wee bit interesting, you know, maybe like a wee bit of depth. Um, the idea of the kind of a deep dark waters at the bottom. Who knows? You know, these colours are kind of a mixing in quite nicely with each other. We might even not end up not having to use the blending brush. Uh, I've got a feeling that the blending brush would just kind of a take away because it's kind of a got like a watery effect just now. Um, the blending brush might actually kind of a take away from some of that. So yeah, maybe we'll just. We'll see how it looks when we're done. <laughs> this is the thing about working with, like just picking up more paint and working with a dirty brush is like sometimes when you hit the canvas at a certain angle or when you hit it quite hard, some of that old lighter colour comes off your brush. <laughs> um, but that's all right. Let's turn this round. And we'll finish it off working up. Yeah, it's just wash this brush, wash all of that lighter colour off my brush. Just so that so I wash and dry and then I'll just pick up that dark that kind of a darker blue. And then all I'm doing is kind of I go back and forth and trying to just just roughly blend those colours in. So there we go. We've got a kind of a, a bit of a gradient going on. Um, what I said I was going to do. Oh, shit. Was not spilled water everywhere in the first 10 minutes of painting. That's okay. So um, I've washed and dried my brush. I'm just going to kind of uh, pick up uh, some more of this, this this kind of a lighter blue colour. And just kind of like I was doing there, um, I might just kind of uh, go through the middle and give the illusion of like, I don't know, like a light source shining on the water. Um, so I don't want too much paint on my brush for this, but that's the thing. There 
is you want to kind of try and keep these brush strokes horizontal when you're doing this, otherwise it kind of Fs it up a wee bit. And I'll just let that naturally dissipate. I think then what I'll maybe do, go and find one of these bristle brushes. Um, so I've got a kind of a, a bristle brush, which is tougher and it's like, it's kind of a, just like messier, almost like rougher, you know? Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually just, oops, Gonna get um, yeah, I think we'll use a bit of white, so I'll pop a wee bit of white down here. And again, I don't want loads and loads of paint on my brush here. I just kind of a, really dip my brush in and then dab it off. Um, and I'm just kind of gonna just and again, you're trying to kind of a. Oops, trying to keep these, uh, these kind of a marks quite horizontal. And it's just to kind of give that illusion of the, the water moving. Now I've kind of put a big blob of white here. That's not a big deal because we can fix that. Just um, we can fix that with our, with our blue color, you know, we can go back over it with the blue and sort that out. Um, but it's just, it doesn't need too much because we've added this, but I just kind of want to give it a wee bit of something, you know. I'm just letting myself run out of paint on my brush and then I just go back and kind of a, scrub it in kind of a thing. Uh, what do we think of that? Almost kind of a, don't like it. <laughs> Almost feels I've made a bit of an art of it. Um, I liked it before without these bits. Uh, okay, so what we can then do is we can just go back with our colour, um, you know, our blue colours, and just reduce, um, you know, take, take some of these away. Okay, I think that's fine. I'm happy with that. Right, that's our background. I'm going to um, am I going to leave it at that? I see a bit here that I think is going to annoy me. So, uh, I might just grab a few bit of that. I can cover some of this. That's about yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, do it. So I'll remember that in future. I'll don't bother with the bristle brush. It's fine without it. Okay. So the idea now is we let this dry and then we're going to go through and add on top of it. Um, what I'll maybe do is I'll catch up a wee bit with the chat. Um, I'll see what you guys are saying. And then I will maybe stick on some music for you because you don't need to hear. The blow dryer going, I'm sure that's not really pleasant for you. Some more mess here. Okay. Chat's been really busy. I wasn't actually expecting this to be as busy because obviously, um, 
because this isn't my usual kind of live, you know. Um, so let's see, Marita, I didn't see you come in. So Marita, hi there. Um, I'm going to try and skip the hellos and just see if anyone's saying anything particular to me. Um, Robin says, do you think Chris will treat himself to the light sears in a tin when it comes out? <laughs> yeah, I already have. Uh, Simon's walkthrough of it wasn't even finished by the time I'd bought it. <laughs> uh, I've been joined by the dog. Can you see her moseying about there? I don't think you can. Um, I see the dog, one of the dogs now. <laughs> uh, following along with Pixie's images, something I recently started, cards say, with regards to Rachel in the video, Ten of Swords, Ace of Cups, Six of Cups. Yeah. Not heard of some of these books. I'll have to investigate. Rachel has left a wonderful legacy. Such a lovely idea. Um, I'd love to paint myself. Um, so it's great to see the process. It's definitely something I think you, sh you should try it, Kathy, if you if you fancy it, because it's not something I really ever thought that I would have been good at. You know, if you'd asked me maybe three months ago, um, I would have told you that I'm rubbish at art. I'm rubbish at painting that kind of a thing. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm no Picasso by any means, but um, I'd definitely surprise myself, um, is what I'm saying. Hey, Greg's here. Hi, Greg. Um, late for class. Not watched a painting program since Paint Along with Nancy in the 70s, enough said. I think she used a palette knife. Um, I've got my palette knife, but I'm just using it for mixing for now. Maybe we'll, if I, I don't think I really need to do any proper thin straight lines in this one, but um, maybe if I end up having to do like a thin straight line, then I'll I'll whip out the palette knife because I'm I've got terrible shaky hands, so I'll I'll, um, I'll probably make an arse of it if I try and do it with the liner brushes. Uh, we're not forced to wait, Robin. <laughs> um, are you pulling cards along with my video, Robin? Well, the next thing we're going to paint is the two pillars, the two high pillars of the High Priestess, because um, I think they're kind of a next in the in the order of things. Um. Sandra's thinking about getting the light sears in a tin. Debbie says, Kathy and Sandra, there's so many great watercolour and acrylic artists on YouTube with step by step tutorials. Yeah, that's totally true. Um, that's what I would do if you fancy it, then just Michelle the painter is fantastic. Um, she's the main one that I follow, um, and I've done a bunch of her paintings. Uh, but there, there are so many. Okay, let's um, get the blow dryer out. Um, I'm going to do what I usually do and stick on some music for you so you just don't need to listen to the, the blow dryer. Let me see. Let's go with some rock. And I'll make myself.
Okay. Um, let me just. <laughs> Your style is confidence and show you. Uh, I do not think. Okay, next we're going to do the the pillars. So the the, the color that Rachel's done the pillars are um, green and red. So we'll um, we we could switch it up and do them black and white like the original Boaz and Yakin. But do you know what? I feel like um, what do I feel like doing? Let's stick with um with the with Rachel's colors for now. Eh? Um, so let's see, we'll use Scarlet, um, in fact, what I'll maybe do is I'll start with deep red and I can have a darker green and then you know how she's got a, a kind of a spiral type effect, we will use lighter colours to, or we'll try, <laughs> we'll try and use lighter colours to kind of give that effect, so I'll start with, for the red, kind of a side of it, I'll start with a deep red. Um, and for the there. For the green, let's go with a sap green. It's kind of a darker green. Okay, and what I'm doing in addition to those colours is I'm just going to mix a slightly lighter colour. Um, just so that I can give it a bit of a highlight almost and use that for the, um, you know, for the spirals, if that makes sense. Um, let's see, we're going to want some white, aren't we, for the... So let's smudge a light on there. Probably far too much, and smudge away on there. There, uh, where that's my palette knife gone. Still covered in blue paint. The only thing here is I want to be careful that I don't uh, end up with blue, mixing blue into these colours. Okay. I'm almost forgetting about these blue kind of things at the top. I know they've got like wee rose type things on them, but I think I'm going to miss that bit out, to be honest, um, just for simplicity's sake. Just to make it a wee bit easier for myself. Um, let's do our pillars first. So, oh no, what brush do I want to use for this? I'll use my this is a three quarter inch flat brush. I'm almost just going to kind of a do them right down. The first thing I need to kind of a work out for myself is where where are they going to come from and go to. And I don't think it really matters too much how high up I make them, but I do want it to be kind of a methodical about where they come down to. Um, and when we look at the card, it's roughly about halfway. So that is. Um, so, say in about here, um, we're talking about here, this kind of a level is where I want to bring my pillars down to, um, and I don't think it matters how far in, but we'll just say about kind of that. Um, so, I'm going to start off with my dark green one on the left hand side. Um, just make sure... We Plenty of um, paint on my brush, so that this is kind of easy enough just to trace down. So again, let me just work out where I'm taking this to. Um, I'd say about, about there. 
last one. Let's go up. So I'm on the next thing. All load up with more green. And right about there. Okay. Just trying to kind of make sure that I've got a you know, like a well defined edge on each side. Just go down the edge. Just like so. Okay. Okay, I think that's good for that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll wash and dry my brush and do my red one as well just now. Go into the fresh water here. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the red. Now, what I do want to do is try and keep this even. So that actually, that's a bit of thumbs width then. So, see a bit of thumbs width on there. And let's see, it's a bit over there. So we almost kind of want to start from about here. Because if it was slightly uneven, it would just annoy me. And I'm sure there's a few people in the chat that could probably relate to that. Just give me those nice turnish rounds just to seem to work. I think it's to do with me being right handed, but I seem to work better going like another that way. Um give it that nice consistent edge. Okay. Right, so I'm probably going to want. Well, no, actually, I don't. I don't want them to dry before I add in because I am. Um, I, I want to kind of a blend. So, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. But let me show you what I'm kind of talking about. So, is this the brush I want to use? No, I think I'll go with a round brush, maybe like a number six round or something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going, so we'll start off with the green. Um, I'm going to go into my light green, um, and kind of just to give it, as I say, that spiral effect. Um, so I'm kind of just taking it from one side over to the other, and it's it's really just it's to 
give the impression of light, really, as the, you know, the, the way that the, you know, it's, it's kind of a coming out. Um, make the light kind of almost at it different and then what I want to do is look back and almost blend it in at one side like that um, and yeah I'm hoping this will do what I want it to do and I'm just going to look silly And just going back and kind of blending it down underneath, but leaving that more kind of a severe light look color change um, up above. Like that. Maybe I'll end up looking silly, but that's all right. It's only the spirals on our pillars at the end of the day. Beeping noise is my phone got off, so I'm just checking. There are no emergencies. Right, okay, that's us for the green one, and go back and hit the red one now. So again, washing and drying the brush so that the colours don't kind of a thingy over. I'm going to have a lighter reddy pinky colour here. And the kind of spirals are going the opposite way on this one, so I'm just going to have a Again, all I'm doing is kind of a softening that kind of a bottom edge of the spirals. I have my pencil. Red ink. Mm -hmm. sort of at some point. Ah, there that is. I'm not pinky.
Nej, okay. The Dianne's just said sip, sip, and that reminds me I should probably get a drink. Got a can of Iron Brew over here. It's really warm, especially with this headset on, so I need to kind of make sure that I do keep uh, keep drinking. What I'll do... Um, This one. See. Most in here actually. So I'm going to use the kind of a darker shades of blue to uh, just do those bits at the top, but oh shit, that's far too dark. Uh, see, this is where I kick myself because I'm not going to be able to. See if I can get it to blend in. There we go. That's not so bad. Oh, that looks like an absolute eyesore on the <laughs> on the screen. Let's see. That is a smidge better. There we are. You can hardly see it now. Right, so I'm going to go into my dark blue just to do these bits at the top of the pillars. Um, and I am probably painting all over myself today. Look at my hands already. Um, but I'm using my I'm using this uh, the brush that I used to do the pillars again. Um, so I think all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of a uh, just come around and rotate my brush here. Yeah. You know, just kind of a mess about with it, but. Get them even. And then I'll just fill that in. There we go. Not going to be too precious about uh, that. It's absolutely fine, that's good enough for me. And again. We would ideally like the two to be more or less even, but Again, I'm not going to drive myself around the twist trying to get them to be exactly the same. So we'll see. I think it's a lot easier to make them bigger than it is to make them smaller. So if they look really bad, look really uneven, I can always make adjust, make one bigger or one smaller. And then just keep looking at it until I'm happy. But to be honest, I think that's fine the way it is. There we go. That'll do us. Okay. 
that's our pillars. The next thing I want to start thinking about is the High Priestess herself, okay? So I'm going to be doing the mask uh, and I'm going to be doing the um, the the kind of a the shawl, the dress, the poncho, whatever it is that we're, I think it's a dress, um, you know, what, what she's wearing. Um, what I'm going to do, she's got these kind of a dreadlocks made with cowrie shells. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and kind of do them later on, just add them in uh, once I've got the mask done and the dress. And once all of that's dry, we'll just come in and add the cowrie shells over the top. Um, but because the, um, the dress is kind of a going to come over, the pillars. I want to make sure that the pillars are going to be dry um, before I start painting. Okay. So what I'm going to kind of do first, I'm actually going to take out my pencil, and I'm just going to kind of make some make a bit of a rough outline. Uh, just so that it's something to go on. Um. So let's see. She pretty much her mask pretty much comes to the top of this we we pretty much try and get our center day so i'd say the middle's about there so her mask is probably see the top of the mask how about that not sure how well you guys oh you can actually see it okay um so this is just a, a rough, a very, very rough outline. We might end up kind of a altering bit as we paint. Um, so then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to come from that bottom centre point and I'm going to join to the top. Okay, so that's kind of a rough way. Right, actually, the, mask, the eyes of the mask. So, uh, yeah, about here. See, this is, you can hear how kind of a quietly I am, just how quiet I am, just because I'm mostly just talking to myself here. Um, but this is why it's bad to use the, the other microphone, because obviously I'm kind of a hunched away over, I'm away over here and in addition, I'm talking to quietly, so it's not very good for you guys if you're as if you're interested in my ramblings, you may well not be in which case I wouldn't really blame you. There we go. So I'm giving myself the eye holes. I'm probably just going to put the rest of the details over and paint. Um okay, so the first thing about the dress is it's got this kind of a darker blue triangle. So I'm just going to kind of a, almost give myself that triangle. And I'm always kind of a working from the middle and that just helps me keep it centered. And then she kind of a extends her hands now. I almost feel now. Do you know what it will be? See, because my canvas is sixteen by twenty inches, um, it's much broader than the card itself. So, if I draw her with her arms kind of extending over the the pillars, the way as much as they are in the card, then she's it's going to look like a flattened her out. So I'm not too worried about that. I do know that that has significance. I think she talks in the book entry a bit about the fact that. Our arms extend past the pillars, so I mean I don't mind if they kind of a go maybe like overlap them a wee bit, but I'm not necessarily needing them to come away out here because it'll just look disproportionate, you know. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna kind of maybe have our arms coming out. I'm actually thinking that she's not really very centered very well, but oh, never mind. Um, 
Okay, and then her, the bottom of her dress is more or less level with the bottom of the pillars. Uh, so let's make that roughly about here. Then we're just kind of a joining them with a bit of a, it's kind of a coming in, coming out. Uh, it's fine. It's a rough guide. We can um, we can make any necessary adjustments as we paint. I almost kind of I feel like I want to make our mask bigger. You know, I might do that on the fly as I'm painting. You mean we may actually fit just just because it's such an interesting feature. Um, I kind of I feel like I want it to be bigger, and I don't even care if it's that makes the head disproportionately big to the body. Um. We'll see how we go. Um, okay. So let's um let's do the mask first. And then we can kind of uh, um go on and do the uh, the dress. Now with the mask, I'm not gonna to be too precious about keeping it the same colours, the exact same colours that we see in the um in, in Rachel's image. I looked up some of these kind of a masks from that area in Guinea in Africa and they come in all kind of a different colours. Um you know, and all different kind of a styles. So kind of a gonna just do my own thing a wee bit, wing it a wee bit. Uh but maybe still kind of a try and keep in you know, stay in keeping with Rachel's image. So I've got some white here. Uh, I'm going to use a smidge of burnt umber, which is brown. Um, add that to that white, and that's just going to give me a kind of a off white beige type colour. I barely want anything. Just enough to give me a kind of a just an off white type colour. Got my red, and I'm probably going to use some black as well. Um, Okay. So again, let me just show you. Um, so this is my kind of a beige colour here. Um, I'm going to be using my red that I already had out for the pillar, and then I've got a bit of black. So the the basic part of the mask, um, I'm going to do in this kind of a beige colour, and then I'll add the other colours on top. So as I say, I think I'm going to kind of a try and make this mask a bit bigger on the fly so I'm still kind of going to use that rough guide oops it's fine that just makes it even bigger uh, but I'll maybe just um Those eyes might be a bit off centre.
and I'll bring that off center. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the whole thing in and I'll come back with some blue after it's dry and just uh, make some eye holes in the mask. Okay, um, let's see what we're going to do is take a smudge. I'm just taking the tiniest wee smidge of black and some of my tan colour, like a white brownie colour, and just making a slightly darker. Uh, darker shade of this kind of a brown. And then the reason I'm doing that is just so that I can kind of make a bit of a mouth. I want it to be quite subtle. Um, oh, that's it's a bit too subtle for the, for the camera. Um, Kind of, kind of make it out. Um, I'm going to need that to dry before I put any more detail on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the press. Just going to keep going. I'm going to wash and dry this brush and. I'll get some of that blue. Just looking at how I'm doing for time. Do you know? Because I'm doing straight lines here, I'd be easier using a flat brush rather than a round brush. So that's what I'm going to do. Swap it in for this, this kind of an angled flat brush. Um, and again, I'm just going into this kind of a, um, ultramarine darker blue. Um, and we're going to kind of do this triangle bit of the dress. Try not to bump into my mask because that's just going to mix brown with this blue colour, which is not unfixable, but um, not really what I want. Okay, how are we getting on? Just having a wee look at the chat, see how you guys are doing. Painting myself just as much as I'm painting this canvas, let me tell you. Uh, right, okay, Pink Divination, hi, how you doing? Um, 
he looks very Auburn in this light. Is that me? <laughs> um, it's fun to watch him architect this project so incisively. Ace of Swords, says Robin. Um, where will temptation lead them next? The devil. The devil could be in relation to the, you know, the mass. There's a tarot deck. The, um, the Raven's Prophecy tarot has one of these kind of a almost tribal type masks for the devil card. It's really, really cool. It's one of my favourite cards in that deck. Um, Coincidentally, who says there's no such thing as synchronicity? Just pulled the two of cups. Um, very ASMR, your concentration voice is so soothing. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that it's not it's soothing and it's not like annoying. Um I was just telling him just telling him this morning that I was going to start sending him decks, even ones that he wouldn't like, so that he can do walkthroughs of everything that I want to see. Yeah, you did say that. Sorsha, hi Sorsha, how are you? Lovely to see you. Just pop by. Um, fantastically fabulous idea and painting test. Thank you very much. It's really lovely to see you. I hope you're doing okay. Um, map, mapping out pencil guidelines and arriving at a certain sense of satisfaction with John Travolta and Nine of Cups. Um, let's see, Jen. I must get going. Been awesome spending time with you again. Sending big love to you all. Thank you very much for being here, Jen. Aurora Star C. Hi, Aurora. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you. Uh, not to play the pessimist, but I don't think he's going to finish this in one session. Perhaps he's not intending to. Well, we'll see. We'll see how we go on. Well, the detail in that snake looks daunting to me. I'm hoping we'll be able to kind of uh, find a way to. Um, well, hopefully we'll still make it look really cool but I'm hoping we'll be able to make it a wee bit easier than what it appears to be just now um, got to go trying to watch with one eye is starting to bother me I'll check back in to see the final piece no bother Debbie I hope you're doing all right um right rather than me getting the blow dryer out i think i'm going to tackle the the dress um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh i'm keeping the same colors for the dress and i'm going to do the same for the snake the reason being right and i don't even know if this would have been intentional um but i noticed that the dress is almost in the colors of the trans flag and obviously you know we know that rachel was trans was a trans woman um you know it's got the pinks and the the blues the right tone of pink and the right tone of blue i think there's white in the trans flag as well I, like i say I, I i'm doubtful that that was actually in purpose because i don't even know if the trans flag was a thing when rachel would have been making this deck and the same for the snake so the snake's got this kind of a yellow and purple color coloration to it um, and there's yellow and purple in both the kind of a, the non-binary flag uh, has black, white, yellow and purple. And also the intersex flag is a kind of a yellow flag with a purple circle, if I remember correctly. Again, I, I'm doubtful that these would have been, um, that these would actually have I don't even know if they were a thing at the time when Rachel was drawing this, so it could it's probably just a coincidence, but I think it's really cool. And for that reason, I'm going to keep those those colours. Um, so what I'm going to do here with the dress is I'm going to... Uh, I am doing the kind of a light blue colour all over, and then I'll come back over the top and add the, the pink stripes. Uh, so I'm just kind of uh, doing my outline just now. Using a smaller brush for my outline and then I'll probably get the bigger brush and just fill in the middle. I'm saying that it's probably not going to take me that long to do it with us. 
Why do I not? You all right, sweetheart? You doing okay? That blue almost feels a wee bit too light, doesn't it? Let's see how it's just... Don't you have any bit of... Much. Put that up there now because I don't think that um I don't think I'm gonna need to have access to the very top anymore. Oh, I should make the comment disappear, shouldn't I? No blow dryer music yet, Simon. No, because um, I've not. I'm not. I'm not using the blow dryer just now. Um, I'm maybe kind of a when I need to add in the the pink over the top of this light blue. I will just go over it with a blow dryer. A ton of paint just to show them I try and get good coverage on this. I know. Oh. Right, okay. So, again, I'm not worried about it being perfectly symmetrical. Um, because, you know, maybe she's got one arm stretched you know, more than the other. It's it's not really a big deal if they're not, but I suppose if I wanted them to be, I could always kind of a go in just now and maybe make any any adjustments. Maybe kind of a bring this out a bit more here. You know, anything that I want to basically change just to make it feel a wee bit more satisfying to look at for me. Um, of course, the thing that I don't want to do is just mess and mess and mess about with it and end up with an absolute mess, you know. So um, I think I'll maybe, I might leave that like that. 
like I say, it's not even, but who cares? Um, let's see. So we obviously we want this to dry before we add the pink over the top. Um, let's see my mask. My mask is actually quite dry now, so I could probably let's see. I could add in these eye holes. So I want to. I want to be quite precise about this. So you can't really see that very well, but uh, let's see. I almost want to get a smaller, thinner brush to go in and just to sort those eyes out. I want to also make sure that I don't have paint all over my hands and I'm not going to send paint everywhere. Elena. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably good enough. <laughs> okay. So I think what I'm going to do, so if we look at the the, the painting, it seems to have like what looks to me like the main lines that are almost forming the nose and there's a kind of a straight line in the center of the head above the eyes i think what i want to do is i want to do them in black and then the other lines on the mask or maybe i'll actually come back and add in the mouth in black as well almost just make that as one of the lines but yeah, I think I want to add them in, in black, and then the other lines that we see, I will make red. And we shall see how that looks. Um, so let's just add my mouth just here. Coming in. Oh, remember that blue is still wet? Coming in and adding in these. Just these lines here, like this, for the nose. For the nose. Kind of a look, look, nose lines. And then there's the one in the center there. Okay, we go wash and try. And we'll pick up some red. Sorry folks, my dog is scratching to get out of the room, so I don't know what my husband's doing, but uh, I might need to go and let her out in a wee sec. Try my best to make these even, but again, it's not the end of the world if they're not. Um, okay, then we have these kind of two lines like this.
That's us. Oh, my bear. There's a bit bare down here, doesn't it? So let me look, maybe I'll just add in some more. Okay. All right. So, right. I'm what I'm going to do. I'm going to go change my water. I'm going to let the dog out of the room. I'm going to change my water. Um. So I'll just wait a couple of minutes. She really wants out. She's like proper getting round about the side of me. Um. I'm going to pop on some music so you guys can at least listen to something. Um. I will. Let's see. I'll mute myself and then I'll.
Hey folks. Um, okay, so I've got ourselves some fresh water. My hands have been cleaned. I can take off the string actually. Just while I'm doing this, I'll pop it right there. Since I remember what it is. Um, yeah, I've cleaned my hands off a bit. Uh, so I, I I took the opportunity to take kind of a dry the canvas as well with a hair dryer you would have seen. Um, so let me just catch up on the chat. Oh, I've been joined with the dog again. Thank you. Between TV and YouTube, my tap, my, my laptop is quite a workout. Says Robin. Um, so does my phone and my computer, says Aurora Starcy. Uh, have you had any professional painting classes? No, I've not. Actually, that's maybe something I should look at doing. I've not been painting that long, to be fair. Um, but no, I've not had any classes. Um, reminds me, I went to my first movie in a theatre last weekend in a couple of years. Uh, I saw Jules. Anybody seen it? Really heartwarming film. Seniors encountering gentle... Uh, crash landed blue alien. Um, an indie film. So. Next week, Thursday, will be Max's first full day of school. He starts kindergarten on Tuesday and has two half days, and Vela will have her first day at the sitters. I might go see a movie, says Dion. That sounds great. This hasn't taken art classes yet. Newbie, page of wands. Uh, I went to see Meg 2 with Jason Statham, another kettle of fish entirely, only because the last voyage of the Demeter, uh, based on a chapter of Bram Stoker's Dracula, isn't shown in the UK yet. Okay. Um, that, uh, I have kind of a, I'm considering going to see the Meg 2. I enjoyed the Meg. Um, okay. We'll we'll add the pink stripes onto the dress just now. Um, and I already had a kind of a light lighter red for when I was doing the. Oh, look at both dogs here now. Um, I already had a kind of a lighter red for when I was doing the the spirals on the pillar. Um, but what I might do is just take a bit more white and add that in there just to make it more pink. Oh, that looks about right. So I'll go get that. Okay. Uh, so the kind of a, the vertical stripes kind of in line with. Hmm. 
Rồi, đó. Just taking them out to the toilet. That's the ring doorbell going. Um, if, if I end up making these stripes a wee bit wavy, that's okay because obviously the fabrics, in fact, it's probably better if I make them a bit wavy, to be honest. Now think about it because obviously the fabric's going to be waving about. Um, what I didn't want to do, which I just have done, is overlap the dress. So, you know, I've, I've put the pink onto the background, which doesn't make sense. Um, hey ho. I knew this wasn't going to be perfect, you know, because I'm just winging it and kind of doing it myself. I can't really tell though. A nice breeze blowing in that, that pour. Very annoying seeing the paint doesn't look on the canvas properly. Mm. 
Yeah, I might need to come back with some blue paint just in the middle of some of those stripes. They're not quite perfect, but um, we then got the horizontal stripes that are coming out. Yeah, And see what they happen down here as well. Okay. Wash and dry the brush. So we've just got the snake in the fashion and the cowdy shells really left to do. Um, and that'll be us. Uh, let's see, we're coming up for 11. We haven't got all that done before the usual time, but if we go on a wee bit, it's fine. Eh, okay, let's... So, I kind of want to... As I say, I'm going to use the same colours with the snake, but... I want to do the head a wee bit different. Um, I'm almost just going to do it like a kind of a python type head. Uh, as though we're almost looking down at it. Um, so I'm trying to think what the other one has to look like. Uh, so let's see what I was saying about here. Just and then we'll just follow the you know the you know that same design, that same pattern that Rachel has, so we can have the spiral. And I'm almost going to just kind of a uh, brush to do that. I think that'll be a wee bit too thick. Um, hmm. Brush is thinner than that, but thicker than that. Let's see what we've got. Oh, this will probably be perfect. Okay, um, I am going to do, let's see, so we want some yellow and I'm going to use this mid yellow. Perfect, already open. And see, to be honest, I, I think what I'm going to do, so I'm going to do the yellow bit first and I'll come out, come back and add in the purple stripes. Um, 
I'm almost going to give it a kind of a darker yellow base colour. Um, and then kind of I give the almost give the illusion that the top is lighter. Um, so come back with a kind of a lighter yellow. So I think I actually want mm, I don't I'm worried about so almost just a pinch, just a smidge of black and kind of mix it in with this yellow. The funny thing is, right, and you wouldn't have guessed this, but see when you mix black and yellow paint together, you get green. And I definitely don't want to end up with kind of a greeny colour. Oh, be fine. A darkish yellow. So In front of his um so the thing that we need to I need to remember with yellow is it's not um it's quite uh it dries kind of a see through ish. So I may well need to do a couple of layers of this, which is fine if I do. Um so I've kind of got the head shape. I'm going to bulk out a wee bit more. And I'm just going to use this brush to almost like just use this to put the body. So I'm just going to just play it like that. And if I end up like, you know, putting too much pressure on the brush and making like some bits of the snake thicker, it's not really such a big deal because, you know, snakes do have bodies where part of their body, like the midsection of their body is usually the thickest. Uh, well, I'm not going to get kind of a four rounds of this. I'm not going to get as much as Rachel did, but. Hopefully, maybe, yeah, come back with a third. Uh, I actually need more yellow. I just realised I've got this yellow ochre colour in here. I should have started with that and then come back with a lighter yellow that rather than trying to mix different colours. That would be a bit silly. That's fine. the brush further up. If I hold it further up, it's kind of easier to to kind of turn it. Now I want to kind of try and judge this so that hard rest is just kind of a resting on the snake the same way it is in the card.
Him. Him. Yeah, obviously, the, as the, the, you know, the snake's going to give a taper out and get thinner towards the end. So again, I'm I'm going to front use the kind of a turn in the rush trick to achieve that. So. I'm going to give her a start thinking about it getting a bit thinner here. Um, I'm kind of turning my brush so that I'm kind of a more using it on the sides as I get bottom. And then I'm just looking at how she does this. So kind of comes down below and almost just. Might even just leave it at that, you know. Because we've still got this fish to add in at the bottom. So that's kind of a... The base coat of our snake, I guess. Um, now I'm going to want to come back. I'm probably going to let that dry and do another layer. Um, also, maybe want to add in some eye caps. Um, I want to give it a bit of a highlight along the kind of a spine, you know, um, just to give it a bit of a more 3D effect. Um, and obviously, after all of that, I want to go. At, uh, you know, put in the the purple stripes. Um, where are we for time? We're just hitting eleven. I'm thinking what I might do. Um, hang on, is my pink? I might actually get um just come back with some of that light blue just to fix how my dress looks here. Um. Kind of a, oops, of course, I put my hand in the yellow paint. I'm almost just coming back with that light blue just to make sure that we can see that it's there. Not that I'm in any way a perfectionist. Pink's still a wee bit wet, which means that when I'm getting over it, I'm dragging the pink paint through which is just going to make even more of an arse of it. So, um, but I suppose you kind of, that almost looks better already on the painting, uh, uh, on the on the screen. See, it looks different on the screen to how it looks in actual life. It, and the, the thing about painting is when you're kind of up close to it the whole time, you lose perspective because you're just too zoomed in, whereas it's quite often good to kind of look away for a bit and then come back and maybe look at it from a different angle or from a bit other way. I find that when I look at it and the the screen, I actually achieve that. I have that um, because I, I'm look, I'm getting it from that different perspective, and it almost looks like a different painting, you know. Um, so okay. So there's that. I don't want to add in those cowrie shells just now because I'm probably going to run into some wet paint down here. Um, I'll probably kind of do that after it all dries. Um, I'm thinking we might actually call it a day here, guys. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave this overnight. I'll let it properly all dry. Any kind of a touch-ups that are needed to, like, to the dress. Um, I think the snake's going to need another layer, so I'll do that. Um, add in the kind of a highlight to the spine, like I was saying, adding in the purple stripes. 
and then it's the fish and the cowrie shells and that's the painting done i probably won't go live again i don't think to finish it off although there's probably no harm in me just jumping on live whenever i'm doing it is there um but i'll definitely let you see the finished result um but yeah i'm going to turn into a pumpkin soon and you guys have been watching me paint for two hours now so i'm very conscious that you know it's not necessarily the most entertaining thing um but thank you so much for being here i've really enjoyed kind of a having company while i've been doing this um i'm gonna to have to go and clean these palettes and these brushes now so wish me luck with that um it's probably going to be a good 20 minute job but did you enjoy this um you know i hope you have uh i will probably post uh the finished painting on my instagram just so that you can see how it ends up um who knows maybe i'll even go live whilst i'm i'm finishing it but we'll see um thanks to you guys that have been here you know the if, you know for the whole for the whole run robin uh diane in particular i know you guys have been here the whole time um so yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed this i think i'm talking round in circles now aren't I? that's the tiredness um take care everyone i uh, have an amazing weekend and i'll see you all soon bye bye